good morning to you. Thank you so much for staying on the Draw News channel. This is still the AM show. And uh, Benjamin Akaku brought you that conversation earlier. And it's now time to focus on other stories. The Defence and Interior Committee of Parliament is recommending a bipartisan committee to further investigate uh, the police shooting incident at the Islamic SHS in Kumasi on Friday, June 17. The committee was directed by the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Babin, to embark on a fact-finding mission and report to the House. Well, we've been joined by ranking member uh, of the Defence and Interior Committee of Parliament to find out why the need for further investigation after uh, the report was presented to uh, the House. Good morning to you, sir. Thanks for your time. Good. Right, so uh, the chairman of your committee, Kennedy Japan, presented the report to the House. The police service itself is conducting internal investigations. In fact, two top officials of the service in the Ashanti region were interdicted. Four others were interdicted. The IGP was in Kumasi, clearly unhappy about the situation. Why is there a need for more investigation on this matter? Well, to start with the speaker's own directive to the committee was for the committee to um, make a fact-finding mission and report back to uh, the House. So the scope of mandate of the committee from the outset was not well defined because when you talk about a fact-finding mission, you are simply saying that the committee should go to Kumasi, establish the bare facts, but we see in the course of attempting to establish even the bare facts of the case, you are in a way carrying out some form of investigation. But because the police has already commenced their own investigation, and we subsequently also realized that the regional directorate of education has also set up some uh, committee to investigate the circumstances surrounding the um, atrocity that were unleashed on the, 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 the students. We, it was very difficult for us to um, navigate around the thin line between a fact-finding mm -hmm. and an investigation. Okay. Nevertheless, we engaged the stakeholders uh, who were involved in the um, if you like, the riot, the attempt to um, get the students to receive medical attention, etc. Mm -hmm. The school authorities were engaged, were engaged the police, and um, at the end of the day, it was very clear that if care was not taken, there would be some cover-ups. For instance, we visited the Asante Regional Police Command, and when we spoke to um, some of the police officers who were themselves injured in the course of trying to control the crowd, it became clear to us that there were some inconsistencies in some of the things they told us. So we came back not very um, excited. In the meantime, we are awaiting the outcome of the police own investigation. Now, because members of the committee noticed that there were a lot of inconsistencies when they, for instance, engaged the police officers who sustained the incident, we thought that, look, we would do the public a lot of good if we were asked or mandated to investigate the matter and not to allow the police to investigate themselves. Right, Mr. Galga, I'll come back to you to find out uh, some of the key uh, facts you were able to gather on this fact-finding mission. But we know the police is also investigating this matter. In fact, uh, the service has admitted that poor tactics were used in that particular incident. Would you want to wait for the police's investigation before you uh, decide if it is actually necessary to set up another bipartisan committee to probe the matter. So there's no duplication, per se. Well, I think right from the outset, 
um, the speaker's own directive um, actually left room for Parliament itself to actually take up the matter and investigate if the outcome of the police um, own investigation turned out to be unsatisfactory. So, so that was the case yeah, right from the outset. But um, after visiting Kumasi and having some interaction with some police officers, and I'll just give you one example. For mm -hmm. instance, the police account, those who were injured, seven of them were injured, was that the day had to I mean, use force, including firing life ammunition, because they saw some of the students of um, the Islamic High Senior School in Kumasi will catalyze it, it. And those are dangerous weapons. And so that is why they decided to fire. But when we probed further <laughs> to ask whether they were able to retrieve that lasted from the students because they had pursued the students even when the students retreated back to campus. You see? Mm -hmm. Now, when we questioned them whether they at least had been able to receive even one catalyst, their responses were very unconvincing. Not a single catalyst was retrieved. So, but the, the, that um, storyline was, was never corroborated by the school authorities, the students, etc. They said no, they only pelted them with stones when they tried to uh, break through the, um, the school security gate. And that was when they also then decided to defend themselves by pelting them with stones. So um, it appears there were a lot of inconsistencies, mm. which is why uh, we, in our own view, thought that look, if care is not taken, there will be some cover up. Yeah, but like you said, we don't want to have um, multiple investigations which may end up um, giving different accounts and uh, results. So I think the best approach would be for us to wait for the IGP investigation to conclude. And when they submit their report and we go through, those guys, for all you know, they have also taken account of the inconsistencies we uh, unraveled when we traveled to Kumasi. If they do, then there would be a real basis for us to plunge into a full blown bipartisan investigation. Mm. So uh, finally, Mr. Galga, apart from the inconsistencies you discovered in the accounts of the police officers on what exactly transpired leading to their injuries, what other uh, facts were you able to gather surrounding this incident? Yes, yeah, so um, first of all, well, it came to light that um, the reason why the police used live ammunition, they used some, I should say, excessive force, was probably because they lacked appropriate crowd control here. I mean, come to think of the fact that the police officers who sustained injury, and there were seven of them, they, who sustained injury, head injury, I mean, injury in the legs and all that. Why? I mean, you see, if, you, if they had the shield with that typical crowd control equipment, pelting of stone shouldn't be a problem. You felt the sword and they use they would use the shield to protect themselves. Mm. But at the time they were deployed to control the crowd, they simply did not have the shield, appropriate crowd control here. And so what they had was the AK forty seven and live ammunition. They didn't even have um, adequate stocks of rubber bullets. So they were forced to use what they had. And therefore, it was very clear that the police themselves are not well resourced when it comes to um, the provision of adequate crowd control um, here. And that is an area government needs to look at very critically. And then we also um, 
came to the conclusion that the the disturbances were in a way justified, even though we were not too happy that the students uh, took the law into their hands. Look, for well over 10 years, the school authorities had been writing to government and asking government to intervene mm. because there were a series of accidents on the frontage of the school between involving motorists, pedestrians, students, and staff. So many accidents on countless occasions. So, and for well over 10 years, they kept complaining, and yet government intervention was zero, or if you like, very like a basical. So, so on, on, on the fateful day when the demonstration happened, there was the rumor that a female student vehicle had been run into by an oncoming uh, vehicle, resulting in the death of the student. That was the trigger. But it turned out that that was just a rumor, a, a business rumor. They, yes, an accident did occur, but the student didn't die. So that was what incensed the students, and they poured onto the street. You see, took the laws in their own hands and uh, blocked traffic flow, and, and it eventually resulted in the police own intervention. Mm. So that was yet another factor. And um, you would see that in our report, we actually called for the director of Ever Road to be sanctioned. Because this is something they could easily have um, intervened. When the police first visited the scene, the IGP on its own was able to provide ropes, you know, to serve as temporary uh, speed ramp. To, to save the lives of the students. So what it simply means is that if our institutions were uh, working in serious, this matter could easily have been averted. So those were uh, 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 some of the findings. We also uh, clearly noticed that, look, the, the, a lot needed to be done to improve upon the uh, discipline on mm. campus because Kumasi Senior High School is about the most popular in the country. And yet, they lack certain basic facilities. So the headmaster is not resident on campus. And you see, when a headmaster is not resident on campus, it undermines the discipline, the control of the student. Right. So, so we, we brought all these things to the fore. I mean, they are captured in the report mm. for government's attention. I appreciate your time here this morning. James Agalga is ranking member of the Defence and Interior Committee in Parliament. And we've just been talking about that recommendation by his committee for a bipartisan probe into the incident that occurred earlier in June at the Islamic SHS, leaving uh, some students injured, police officers as well. When we come back, I'll be giving you reason to stay glued to the Draw News Channel this weekend. We are launching a new program and premiering our uh, documentary in commemoration of the 10th anniversary of the death of former President John Evans Atamils. Do stay.